To many people's surprise, Tyson Fury decided to hang up his gloves and announced his retirement from boxing after beating Dillian White. You might think, that's that, but not exactly. In the same post-fight interview, he called out Francis Ngannou and announced his interest in fighting him. Does that have you confused? Well, let us tell you all about Tyson Fury's potential next fight and whatever is going to go on in the world of combat sports. Stay tuned. Tyson Fury's call-out for Francis Ngannou. The Gypsy King is on top of the world right now. His last title defense was against Dillian White, and it solidified him as one of the greatest heavyweight boxers of all time. The match ended pretty much as we all expected it to. Fury got the knockout after a dominant performance in the sixth round, with a heavy uppercut followed by a shock that knocked Dillian White down. The stoppage was protested by Dillian White, who thought the shove was illegal and had an impact on his ability to get back to his feet. Not many people actually agreed with him, but, you know, credit to him for trying. Following the TKO win, the Gypsy King kept his word to his wife and announced that that was his last fight. As much as that was a shocker for some of us, Fury has been discussing retirement plans for a few months now. He even tweeted a picture of Khabib Nurmagomedov, captioned, This man did it right. Well, it looked like he just wanted his legacy to be looked at in the same way. An undefeated champ who retired in his prime after making boatloads of money. Gotta say, he did a nice job. The call of Francis Ngannou was a nice one. Some might even call it wholesome. The two heavyweight champions of their respective sports stood together and expressed their interest in co-promoting a super fight, which would be interesting for every single fan involved. Francis said on the microphone that they would fight to figure out who was the baddest mother on the planet. But... Let's be real here, Francis. Give yourself some credit. We all know it's you. Are we going to see a mixed rules bout? Now, you might be wondering, how can a guy announce his retirement and be talking about a future matchup at the exact same time? To answer your question, this would not be a professional boxing match. Fury is rather looking for an exhibition with some mixed rules to make it a little bit more fair. One of his ideas was to have a boxing match with MMA gloves inside of a cage instead of a ring. This would mean that Fury wouldn't be putting up his undefeated record on the line against an 0-0 boxer. And I mean, I can't blame him. He's just trying to get an easy payday. And it benefits Ngannou as well. It would be the first time a bout with mixed rules would take place at such a high magnitude. Although recently, Demetrius Johnson fought Road Dang in a crossover fight in 1FC. The rules weren't changed at all. Instead, they alternated the rounds with Mai Tai and MMA rules. So the first round would be a Muay Thai round followed by a three-minute MMA round. We can assume that Ngannou would love to see that happen, but it's not very likely that a boxer would agree to fight an MMA athlete, which is smart because we all have an idea of exactly how that would go. Floyd Mayweather infamously boxed Conor McGregor and refused to allow any changes in the rules. He was also made an offer by Khabib Nurmagomedov to box him for 11 rounds and fight him with MMA rules on the 12th. He didn't like that either. I guess you get to pick the game when you have all the money, right? Now on to Francis Ngannou's contract issues. Everyone involved in the MMA bubble is aware of Ngannou's battle with the UFC over his contract. It was disclosed that this baddest man on the planet was only paid $600,000 to a first title defense against Cyril Ghan. Just to give you a perspective, Dillian White has paid more than $7 million to box Tyson Fury and he wasn't even on the A side. The fighter pay issue has been brought up uh, by a number of UFC employees and media members. Jake Paul has recently been pretty vocal about this issue. And love him or hate him, you gotta back him up on this. In a report by ESPN in 2021, it was revealed that less than 20% of the revenue made by the UFC goes back into the fighters' pockets. That's, that's insane. The UFC's been getting away with underpaying fighters as they have a monopoly in the MMA world. Many of the top fighters have spoken out about this, including John Jones, Jorge Masdival, and Dustin Poirier. What did the UFC do about about that, they paid them their money so they wouldn't bring it up anymore. The UFC tried to do the exact same thing with Ngannou, but well, that didn't quite work on him. If you look at the way Francis has been treated by the company over the last few months, his behavior seems very justified. The UFC made an interim title fight for Ngannou's belt just three months after he won the undisputed title. Why? Because they wanted to do a show in Houston, and they wanted Derek Lewis to be fighting for a belt. At that time, the Predator only had one fight left in his contract, and he had already told the brass that he would be leaving the company after that fight. He had also expressed interest in trying out boxing. That's right, the match against Tyson Fury was in the makings for a long time. The heavyweight clash took place in January, and the UFC was desperately hoping for Gan to outclass Ngannou on his feet, which he did, but Ngannou had a secret weapon, his wrestling, which he used to get a unanimous decision win. Damn you, Kamaru Usman! So, anyways, <laughs> there it was. The good guy won. He took his belt, ran into the crowd, and blew a kiss on his way out. N no, wait, that was the CM Punk. There is still a non-complete clause that will go over by the end of the year, and we can finally see Ngannou get his long-awaited payday. After hearing his story and all that he's been through, you just can't help but root for him. Next up in other related news, Jake Paul refuses to pay Eddie Hearn. If you remember the pre-fight press of Amanda Serrano versus Katie Taylor, Jake Paul made a bet with Eddie Hearn of $1 million on whose fighter would win. Paul was in favor of his friend Amanda Serrano, and Hearn thought the champ would 
to successfully defend her throne. It seemed like Eddie Hearn was caught off guard by Jake's idea of betting on the fight. It was pretty clear that he was hesitant in agreeing on the bet, and if it hadn't been discussed in public, they probably would have said no. Jake's been quite the betting man on his boxing career, so he tried to get Ben Askren to put his fight purse on the line in the winner-takes-all scenario. Askren didn't fall for it, which in hindsight was super smart. Jake was successful with his next opponent, though, Tyrone Woodley. Only this time, the bet was a tattoo. That's right, the loser was supposed to have their opponent's name tattooed permanently. Hey, ouch. That's gonna leave a mark. Uh, wait, literally. <laughs> the gambling habit finally caught up to the problem child, as his fighter lost the match, and he would have had to give away a million dollars. Well, not so fast. After the fight, Jake thought it could have gone either way, and it, it was unfair to him. He also revealed that Hearn's agents had talked to him backstage about the idea of betting as promoters being unethical. Looks like Eddie shot himself in the foot right there. Maybe some people just aren't risk takers. Canelo named his favorite boxer. The pound for pound king of boxing has taken his popularity to the next level through his jaw-dropping performances and the hilarious interviews with the newly learned English. Recently, he was asked who his favorite boxer was other than himself. The champ said that he doesn't watch too much boxing, but he likes watching Gervonta Davis. Canelo is set to make his light heavyweight debut on May 7th against Dimitri Bivol in what happens to be the same date as UFC 274 in Phoenix, Arizona. It looks like the pay-per-view battle between Canelo Alvarez and the UFC isn't stopping anytime soon. UFC 274 face-offs. Speaking of the UFC, the stars of UFC 274's main card appeared at the pre-fight press conference on Thursday. Everyone was super respectful though, which was really weird. The fans gave a hero's reception to Tony Ferguson like they always do, and Justin Gaethje felt like a good guy going into his second undisputed title fight. The main card features an American fighter in almost every bout, which the fans in Arizona can certainly get behind. So let us know which event you're looking forward to the most. And that's a wrap for this video. Would you like to see Tyson Fury and Francis Ngannou face off in a mixed rules match? Let us know in the comments section below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. I'll see you in the next one.